There he goes. There's a cock right here. I see him. Where is he? There he is. He's right here. Start it up. Good morning, boys and girls. We're going to be doing some pheasant hunting today. Probably put together a nice little clean, well, shoot, clean, and probably cook video. Now here in Rhode Island, well, here everywhere, they stock pheasants because they're not native to North America, so usually they stock them the night before, and then the objective is to go around really thick shit, like this, walk through, kick them up, and then shoot them. It's a ton of fun, and it's actually hard, so I encourage you guys to get out here and try this. Now what I hunt with, for pheasant, just for fun, I use my AR shotgun, which is just a 12 gauge with a red dot sight, or green dot, if you will. And I like to put it to work. I don't just buy guns for show. So I like to use them as much as possible and I can't use them for waterfowl. So you wanna just walk through this stuff like this, keeping your eye out. The cocks are easy to spot because they have a white ring. The hens are tricky, usually. The cocks will be more apt to jump and fly away closer or farther away from them, but the hens usually stand pretty tight. There he goes, there's a cock right here, I see him. Let's see if I can get him to fly. Guys, wear some thick pants when you're doing this. It's not fun taking prickers to the legs. He's right here. Well, that's my limit. So now that that's all done, time to go clean these bad boys up. All right guys, we are back at the house and I was just taking a look at these two and they look totally different. And they're both males. I have no idea if it's the age, if it's whatever farm they came from, whatever like subspecies is going on here. But for some reason there's completely different colors going on here. This one's got a lot of green. This one's got a lot of brown in it. I don't know, they'll probably taste the same. So, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I properly clean these. And now, I like to keep the legs intact with the body. Um, a lot of people like to cut them open like duck and just take the breast, but I don't really like to waste the legs. They, they're delicious. Plus, it's, they're really not fat birds, so. I like to take everything that I can from these guys. They are like chicken, but way better, if that makes any sense. First, get your knife, make sure it's nice and sharp and clean. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the wing right here, and you're gonna find where this separates, where you can kind of see this bone right here. You're just gonna cut into it, and then you can break and twist it off. And you can go on that same crease, and lose your bird. And we're back. So, same thing on the other side. This guy gets shot right here, so it's actually already, it's already broken. You can just kinda come from underneath. Now be careful with these bones because if you shot them and it splintered, they are very sharp. Make sure you also have a waste basket handy. Next thing I like to do is I like to grab the legs right here. And if you kinda bend it like this, you can feel right where that Right where that knuckle occurs, you can slice into that. Come from the other side. Get rid of the feet. Give them a nice twist. Slice. If you're gonna save these tail feathers, just go right in here. Just kind of get a good spot. See where it meets the body. You just cut these guys off. And what you can do with these is, I, I mean, I like them for decoration, they're nice. So what I'll typically do is, I'll wrap them in plastic or put them in a gallon Ziploc and I'll stick them in the freezer for a couple days after I pluck away all this meat and let it dry. And then this part, kind of just pluck away a little bit of this. Get rid of it so you can see what you're doing. 
Try and keep the feathers to a minimum. Then you just come in here, reach in. You're gonna make a little incision right at the skin mark. So you can just cut back a little bit of skin. And I'm doing this while they're still warm so I can just peel back all of the skin. And watch out for bones again, they're sharp. And this is where you can see where the head meets the body, right in here. You can just get rid of that. Now I shoot with lead because I'd rather accidentally bite into a lead BB and spit it out than bite into a steel one. If you don't have to shoot steel, I wouldn't recommend it for that reason alone. All right, next step, take these legs, just kind of push them down, break them out of the way. Make a pop noise, both of them, All right? So they sit like that. It's a piece right here. I'm gonna make a small incision right there. And then what I do is I just peel all of this back. And this is definitely a graphic part. You can use something to get this out, but I just reach inside. So, after you've got all the insides nice and cleaned out, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get rid of all this junk because this is, this is the ass. So, you see where this is right here like that? You just come around here like this with the knife. And I just kinda cut it just out and around and back up like a horseshoe shape. Just remove all that junk. And then, take your bird and you give it a nice good rinse in fresh water. Now what I'll do with this is I'll take this and I'll get a big bowl or a gallon Ziploc and um, I'll fill it with salt water. If you can get it from the ocean, that's even better. But I'm gonna use tap water with sea salt and I'm gonna let it sit in that for a couple of hours. It'll really extract the rest of the blood from all these inside areas. And then uh, I'll do a thorough picking and go through all this, make sure I didn't miss any BBs in the areas that I was gonna eat because nobody likes biting into BBs. So I just got through uh, cleaning up this other bird and there's a lot of fat on here. I just wanted to show you guys that if you see a lot of this yellow stuff, it's good, leave it on there. It's good for the flavor. I just, I noticed that the other bird didn't have a lot of fat and this one definitely has more. So. Do not be afraid of this stuff. It is actually delicious. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab a gallon Ziploc, fill it up with some sea salt and uh, some salt water and let it brine in the refrigerator for probably a couple hours and then take it out and make a new brine where it's gonna sit for a couple of days and that's the next step. So, see you there. All right, now for the cooking part. After those birds have been sitting in that salt water brine for about two hours, you're gonna take them out and then give them like a thorough clean where you pick out all the feathers and all the other BBs that might still be stuck in there. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get another gallon Ziploc bag. And in that bag, you're going to add some brown sugar, some sesame oil, some oyster sauce, some garlic, some ginger, some onions, uh, some red wine vinegar, um, some salt and some pepper, and some Italian seasoning. I'm gonna add all of these uh, ingredients and their quantities somewhere on the side over here so you can follow along or I'll put them in the description below. I'll take all of those ingredients, put them in this bag, and I'll let them sit in the refrigerator for about two days because that's a good sweet spot. And then every day I just flip it so that all of the, uh, all the juices really get sucked into the bird. This bag has two birds in it. If you're gonna do two at once, then I suggest that you just double the ingredients. So, after these guys have been sitting in this bag for about two days and really sucking in the flavor, I then cut up uh, some carrots and potatoes and uh, some Italian seasoning and I sprinkle it on top in a large roasting pan. I just like to put the birds in the middle and then put the carrots and potatoes all the way around it. I will then put it in the oven for 500 degrees for about 10 minutes so the bird gets a nice firm exterior. 
I'll put the lid back on the pan and I'll cook it for another 25 minutes or so at um, 375 degrees. What I'll do is I'll cut the potatoes into like inch squares or inch and a half cubes. And when those are done, that usually means that the bird is done. So that pretty much sums up the catching, cleaning and cooking process for these guys. It's fairly simple. Um, there's, there's a couple different ways to do it, but that's the way I like to do it. And I haven't found another good pheasant recipe yet, but if you guys know one, please let me know. Uh, also, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Ultimately, it's my goal to share my knowledge with you guys. And I would love if you guys did the same. So thanks for watching and I will catch you guys next time.